Hi gang, thanks for visiting once again. Bill McCabe here uh, from the Iron Crane School. And we just finished uh, a workout and uh, one of the things that we talked about in class was the sigh. And I'm not gonna explain these in any uh, degree of detail today except just to let you know what I'm talking about. And uh, what I'd like to do is just demonstrate some of the various things uh, that represent hand motions that you'd want to employ when you learn how to use the sigh. Uh, and just so you can reinforce it uh, against what you're doing in your own practice and explore different avenues of growth. So uh, most of the times when you uh, perform with the sign, you have them uh, in a hold position. I'm going to show you a close-up of the hold position just so you get the idea. Okay, this is the correct way to put them into a stable hold position. When you have them like this, they're solid. Some people will hold like this, or, or they'll hold, you know, like one like this. Uh, don't even go there, okay? Just uh, uh, one sits on top of the other, and it's locked into place like this. So, for example, if I have to get them to both hands, I just simply lift up my hand, and it crosses right over, and, and flies from one to the other comfortably and efficiently. Again, I just raise it up, and it's over. Again, up. And a close-up of that move, just so you have an idea, I'll give you an angle over my right shoulder. And as I go up, and as my right hand ascends, this floats free, and my left hand captures the side. And then they're both holding in, in exactly the same way, each side in one hand. And you notice I put the forefinger above the uh, top uh, portion of the side to stabilize it, while I grasp it and lock it with my other fingers. So again, uh, you go from the two-hand hold position and you raise it up, flies across, releases, and goes uh, into the other free hand. And then they assume an identical position. Okay? That's one example. Some of the other moves that you want to get used to at the side, blocking moves. Blo and, and most of these moves follow the empty hand blocking moves of either karate or taekwondo. And uh, we're not going to elaborate too much on what's happening with the blocks. I think it's self-evident. As you go through the various postures and positions, you sort of see what's happening. Okay. Next thing is, is what do you do uh, with the side as far as uh, manipulating and using them efficiently uh, as uh, self-defense tools? You have the basic strikes. And this would be with the butt end of the side, which is a reinforced butt end, as you can see. But what happens if you want to get some extension on this? Well, then you use the extended or pointed end. Now, what you have with this, of course, is you have three points facing forward at all times. So you have other uses for this besides a thrusting type of weapon. But what I want to talk about right now is this. <coughs> Several different techniques uh, relate to uh, mobilization of the side while it's in your hand, and that's what I want to cover most importantly uh, uh, today. Uh, if you look at my right hand, I'll go from this position to a reaching out with a strike and then back. So block position, reach out, strike, back. And if you look at how I'm getting that extension on there and then recapturing it, up, out, back. And here's a rotating point here around the side of the side. You can see how it's rotating. Okay, and you need to, over time, get good experience at that with both hands. So high and then horizontal. You have the fanning technique, you have the horizontal technique. You have the fanning and the horizontal. Each one has its own purpose. You have the fanning and the horizontal. Fanning, horizontal, down. Fanning, down. You can use either the side against arm to block, or you can use the full body of the side to block. You can also block with the side against your body reinforced, or you can block open. Okay, you can block open, positioning the side for thrust. Uh, at any point in time, you 
should be able to convert from one motion or one form of motion to another. So for example, uh, if we're uh, doing a, a down block, I should be able to go from a down block to a fan aid technique to a down block, followed with a thrust, followed with a fan aid technique with a down block. And I'm just improvising this as we're doing it today. I'm just sort of making it up as we're going along. But I want to give you a, a full 360 degree glimpse at all the possibilities here. So you block fan, block horizontal fan, block strike, strike forward, reverse points forward, points forward, double block, double strike, double block, underneath, one, two, three, cutting strikes, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Coming across, this symbolizes taking a sigh from a carrying position, from a carrying position, out, throwing it into the ground. And actually, you can practice if you have a sigh of your own, drawing it and then throwing it. A sigh has a natural balance, so this isn't a very difficult or complicated technique. You throw it, and right here, you let go of it as though it were a hot potato. You don't try to throw it all the way to the ground. You let go of it, and its own energy will carry it point forward to the ground. But there are many forms in Psi where you're doing a sequence of motions, <coughs> and for example, uh, you'll block, and you'll come forward, down, block, forward, down, and then execute. And then right here, within the context of a form, you'll do this move. Or you'll come across and do it this way. And it portrays that particular move that you're drawing from within yourself and coming out. There are some forms that will actually start in that fashion. For example, the beginning of one form of issue will block, strike, hit, coming from here, capture, up. Again, one, two, down, hit, hit, and so forth. Uh, within the context of side motion, uh, we were showing you about combining the motions from the low angle, and then we showed the high block and cutting across. There's also um, uh, the angle where you're low and you cut high. And this is like a high block or an open block. Then you cut low and go down. Now watch. This looks like I'm striking here. You know, it looks like I'm just going immediately to a low area. But if you watch, there's a fan block at the very inception of the motion. So you want to build that into your normal flow. And initially, when you learn Psi, you break it up into a high block followed by two cuts low followed by a high block, followed by two cuts low. And over time, this will smooth down to where it's just up, 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 okay? And then down. Uh, other things with the shy, uh, you can double up on all your techniques. Uh, you can go across, you can do these like you're doing with my these sticks, and then do the reverses within the context of the shy, and go right back. You develop a nice even flow with that. Uh, you can go from butt end strikes to forward strikes to thrust to blocks, double blocks, double butt end strikes, reverses, in, down. And really, the sky's the limit. So, having said that, take these little building blocks, play with them, go back to your schools, experiment uh, with them with your instructors, and we'll see you down the line. Don't forget to, to visit us whenever you have a chance. Take care.